Um, hello and welcome. Um, here I am this time to show you a little bit about the GDS RCA software. Um, so please enjoy. This is the um, icon for the software. Here we select the right serial number for the DIF card and uh, make match the uh, current gain for the amplifier of the accelerometer on the software. Uh, the gain has to be set manually on the amplifier itself on the machine, but then the values have to match each other. Just confirm that we have the right the right value. And here we have the main window, the main screen of uh, GDS RCA. Here we can run uh, resonant testing, damping testing, and torsional shear testing, depending on the uh, upgrade and version of the machine that you have. The basic system will allow you to run resonant tests and damping tests. Um, and the main window will allow you to select the ranges of frequencies that you want to cover in order to find the natural frequency of the sample. Uh, in coarse, uh, ample um, increments, in this case I'm going to select a, um, because I know the properties of this, this specimen and what the expected natural frequency for it will be, I am going to select a narrow uh, range of frequencies from 50 hertz to 80 hertz with increments of 5 hertz and an amplitude of 0.1 volts. Once you have approached the um, frequency um, and you have a close enough value for it, you can run a finer, a finer uh, sweep with increments of 0.1 hertz instead of 5 hertz uh, within a band. So here we're going to run the, the test. And while we do so, we will see how uh, our frequency readings are increasing in increments of uh, 5 Hz. And we on the screen are also seeing the response of the accelerometer in terms of millivolts. Mm. There you go. So here we have found a close, a relatively close match for our uh, response. Uh, if we want to narrow down them um, or make it a finer result, what we can do is we can uh, select our um, estimated value and set a finer increment sweep. So like a band of 10 hertz. That means that it will go, it will run the test between 55 hertz and um, 75 hertz plus minus 10 with increments of 1 hertz. At this point we don't want to save the data of the results because we are still too far away from finding the natural frequency for the specimen. And at the, on this screen we can see the um, voltage response again. We will notice how the values on the upper left part of the screen increase as we run an increment every time we increase the frequency that the sample is excited to and this should keep this trend until it reaches its um, natural frequency or as close as within the ranges of the uh, within the parameters of the fine sweep set up and then it will start dropping so here we saw how it went up to 6000 millivolts and then it starts dropping again so this should give us a bell curve at the end of the test. Um, here we can also see the uh, peak strain in th for every frequency sweep. Um, and here we go, our result. And the estimated uh, strain um, calculated from a geometrical conversion based on the results of the accelerometer. So we can assume that the frequency and the natural frequency of our, of our particular specimen is uh, has a value of around 64 hertz. Um, the system works in a similar way for the flexure test. Um, okay, here we select how to save our data file, um, and then we can switch to our flexure mode. Uh, the um, operativeness of the system is similar in terms of its software. The only change is uh, applied on the drive of the sample itself, uh, whereas in our previous on our previous test we had four coils uh, exciting the sample in torsion uh, with a net stress 
uh, in this case we only have two coils working and applying and a horizontal load which uh, as a result provides a uh, flexural excitation to our specimen but the test is run the same way if we go now for the damping test once we found the natural frequency for it we can run at a given excitation voltage a damping test um, like the one I'm just about to show you here we can see the damping response of this particular of this particular aluminium specimen and we can use um, the following window to calculate the logarithmic decrement it will work in a similar way for uh, flexure Here we can see what the data file name is for every every saving we run. Um, <coughs> the torsional shear window will allow you to run torsional shear tests uh, at low frequencies, at a low, lower frequencies, one hertz, two hertz, and will give you the um, uh, the parameters in, um, that we aim to achieve, like the shear modulus, the area of the triangle for hysteresis, the area of loop, um, and the hysteric and the hysteric damping ratio. Uh, how do we control the number of cycles that we run each one of these tests here? This is done from this setting. Uh, and here we can select things like the specimen um, details, the dimensions of the specimen. The, these are um, constants that are uh, special for every machine that are used for the geometrical conversion from acceleration to a strain uh, for for the excitation and the levels of strain that the system that the sample will achieve depending on the excitation mode that we have used for our test and we can select the details of the acquisition system as in the number of cycles that we will run under a constant frequency for our test or uh, our and the number of cycles up and down for the frequency to be achieved and the amount of time that we will have in between every uh, frequency increment. Also, in order to find an average uh, <coughs> peak output for our test, we can select the uh, percentage of, uh, of the data points that we will take into account for this calculation. We can also save the time domain data for every frequency. Um, so that it can be available for you in the results. In the damping case, we can select the amount of time that we will be exciting the sample at a constant frequency before allowing it to damp on, a, on its free mode. And for this final window, we will select some of the uh, calibration details of the displacement sensor used for torsional shear only, which in turn will work out the, the amount of uh, stress that's applied under torsion and will provide the results of the hysteric, hysterical damping and uh, the shear modulus for torsional shear testing. Okay, so, well, I think this is all. Thank you very much for looking at this brief introduction of uh, the GDS lab, the GDS RCA software. If you have any question, uh, please get in contact with us. We can course provide you with further details of the way that the software operates and the data that it's uh, provided for the testing and well any other question we'll be happy to help thank you very much